www.watchcjclive.com is watching us right now. I ain't gonna know what to say. So what? You need to start focus when you go. Take things serious, man. You're the one to talk. When you go. At least I'm doing the right thing. It's like, is there something in my telephone the wrong or something? Yes, actually. When you go. listen to the good, not the bad, when you go. This voice in my head telling me that I had more time. So I put down the paper and I was watching a movie. Wenny, you can even start focus now, Wenny. Take things serious, no man, Wenny. Halle, Halle. Yes, Wenny. Calm down. Wenny, you're not ready. I am. You're still not ready, Wenny. <laughs> Hold on, girls, hold on. What's happening here? Why are you fighting? She's not focusing. What? Never mind. Everybody makes mistakes. Don't you make mistakes, Pam? Oh, yes, sometimes I do. You know how many times I would want to do the right and end up doing the wrong? Many, many times. Oh, yes. So do I. So you see, girls, you have to be patient with each other. Oh, I understand now. Like when I was at church, somebody said that they wanted to say the truth, but they let us come out accidentally. I understand. Everyone makes mistakes. I'm sorry for pushing you so hard. And I'm sorry I wasn't so focused. It's Good. Okay. Good. Wonderful. So now let's welcome all our viewers. Welcome, welcome everyone. everyone. And share that link. Yes, because when you share the link with a friend, you're sharing the word of God. Also, don't forget to smash that like button in five, four, three, two, one. Did you do it? for today. Thank you for everything you have done for us. Guide us and protect us. Now, O oh Lord, bless this sermon and bless everyone who is watching. Let them have a blessed night, O oh Lord. Amen. There's a voice that cries out in the silence He's searching for a heart that will love him And longing for a child that will give him their all Give it all, he wants it all And there's a God that walks over the earth He's searching for a heart that is desperate and longing for a child that will give him their all Give it all, he wants it all And he says, love me Love me with your whole heart He wants it all today Serve me, serve me with your life now He wants it all today Today, he wants it all today. He wants it all today. He wants it all. And there's a God that walks over the earth. He's searching for a heart that is desperate and longing for a child that will give him their all. Give it all. He wants it all. And he He 
want it all today. Serve me, serve me with your life now. He wants it all today. Bow down, let go of your idols. He wants it all today. He wants it all today. He wants it all today. He wants it all. boys and girls. Hi, Brad. Good night, Pam. Good night, John. Hi, Pam. How are you? I'm awesome. Tonight's lesson is entitled, Jesus was the greatest storyteller. Is that wonderful? Do you like stories, John? I love stories. Okay, well, you are going to pretend you're Jesus and you're going to tell us some more about the stories Jesus told. That's great. Jesus told lots of very interesting stories. Oh, yes. And I learned that they are called parables. Oh, yes. Could you tell us the first one? Well, one of my favorites is called the Good Samaritan. Have you ever heard of that one, Brad? Oh, yes. I love that story. Right. It teaches us how to be good neighbors. Say it after me, children. It teaches us to be good neighbors. Neighbors. Okay, so here goes. <clears throat> One day, there was a man who was on his way to Jericho. And as he was going, there were some criminals lurking at the side of the road. They were really robbers, and they attacked this man, and they stole everything he had, and then they beat him up really, 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 really badly. Mm -hmm. He was left on the side of the road to die. He was barely moving. Can you imagine that, Pam? Oh, yes. And, 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 and the story goes on to say that uh, some people pass by first, a Levi, and then a priest. And you know what? They went over and looked at him, and they just cut their eyes and decided that they are not going to help him. As a matter of fact, the priest said, you see, I cannot afford to dirty my hands and my gown, so I'll just leave him on the road. And that's what they did. Okay, well, you said a mouthful. I'm telling the story. But anyway... Then there was a third person who passed. Do you know who that third person was, Brad? Yes, I know. He was a Samaritan. Right. And just like the Samaritan from our lesson the other night who came back to tell Jesus thanks, this Samaritan was also a very good neighbor. He saw the man lying on the side of the road. And he went over and, oh, he felt so sad. He was like, oh, my, who did this to this poor man? I must help him. So he got his little kits and he tended to his wounds. 
You know, Pam, like when you fall at home and your mom gets that little kid and she puts on the medicine and the Band-Aid on your knee. Oh, yes, John. Right. So he patched him up. Then he took him to the nearest inn and he left him there. And he told the innkeeper that he's going to give him some money and he should take care of the man. Then he would come back and give him the rest of the money. Isn't that wonderful? Oh, yes, it is. Brad? Oh. That was awesome. Not a lot of people would do something like that. Have you ever seen someone get beat up, Pam, and you help them? Yes, on the play field at my school. There was a little boy, a little handicapped boy, and they always tease him. And one day, I had to go to his rescue. Awesome. So, this is easy. Friends out there, you can put your answer in the chat. Who was the good neighbor? Okay. Tell them the answer, Pam. Uh, the Samaritan. Great. You're a good student. Give yourself a clap. Jesus told other stories. Do you remember any, Brad and Pam? Yes, yes, yes. But um, since I've been doing so much talking, Brad, any stories you remember? Oh, sure. I am longing to tell this story. Go right ahead. This story is found in the book St. Luke, and the chapter is 15. Now, as you know, Jesus was a good storyteller. Mm -hmm. Now, in St. John chapter 15, Jesus started to tell a lot of stories. He started out by st talking about the lost sheep. Then, if that wasn't enough, he spoke about the lost coin. And then, he went into my favorite, the prodigal son. Now, listen to Jesus as he relates this story. There was a certain man who had two sons. How many sons, Pam? Two. So there was an older son and a younger son. Very good, Pam. And one day, while the father was at the house, the younger son came to him and said, Daddy, I want my portion now. You want your portion now? The father responded. And the little boy said, Yes, I'm ready for my portion now. I am ready to do road. Do what? Do road. Ah, the father became very sad based on the request of the younger son. Because based on the culture of the land, it was the older son who should have gotten his inheritance first. So the father became very sad. So the father gave him his portion. And you know what he did, John? Tell me what the younger son did. Well, Brad, I remember quite well. He took that money and he spent it all. He went to parties. He bought drinks for his friends. He bought a nice flashy car. Well, maybe it wasn't a car. Maybe it was more like a carriage or something. But he bought all the best things and spent all the money. You are right, John. So the Bible says, so Jesus continued to tell the story. He said that the young guy, he left his father's home and went into a far country. Now, if, well, if it was Jamaica, Pam, which country do you think this young boy went? Oh, oh, I know. Way over in Westmoreland. Ah, you are correct. Now, can you imagine this little boy living in Spanish town? He went all the way to Westmoreland. And guess what? He started, as John says, he started to live a life that wasn't Christian-like. Huh? The young people say his life was lit. He was doing road. 
drinking alcohol, wearing jewelry. He was partying. I can just imagine that he was drinking rum and Red Bull. He was drinking energy. And he was smoking weed and gravel. Ah, oh, that was really a bad life. But guess what, Pam? What, John? What, Brad? Jesus went on to say, while he was in that far country, there came a famine. Do you know what is a famine, John? Oh, yes. It means there was no food in the country. Right. So, he became hungry. He became in want. So he went to look for a job. And he found a job. You know what job it was, Pam? Yes. What? Feeding pigs. Ah, right. But he didn't love it because it was hard work feeding pigs. And he decided, oh, I don't like this job. I'm going back home. Going back home to my father where oh, I get good food. I get rice and peas and what, John? Veggie. Ah, I would say chicken. But he was getting good food. So he went back home. But guess what, Pam? His father was looking for him to come back home. Yes. Can ah, you imagine? He was waiting for him. Right. And one day, guess what the father saw in the distance coming? The boy. Oh, it's yes. Boy. He saw his son coming back home and he was happy. He was elated. He was delighted. So he ran from his home, jumped on his son, hugged him and kissed him. Mm. He was overjoyed because his son was lost and now he is found. Oh, yes. And Brad, that's a beautiful story of forgiveness and love, isn't it? Oh, yes. And you know, boys and girls who are watching us online, this story has a nice meaning to it. There are many boys and girls and even adults, big men and big women, who have gone astray. But God, our Heavenly Father, He is looking out for us to come back home. Boys and girls, mother and father, you too can come back home. Oh, yes. That is a wonderful story, Brad. And you're a very good storyteller. Oh, you yes. You have to teach me how to do that storyteller voice. Well, you Jesus is the greatest storyteller, and I want to be like Jesus. Beautiful. So this has brought us to the end of our lesson for tonight. And boys and girls, we see you again tomorrow night when our lesson will be Jesus can fix any problem. So see you all tomorrow night, same time, same place. Goodbye now. Bye. Bye. Good night, everyone. I want to welcome you to tonight's song service and I hope that you'll enjoy and that you'll be blessed.
going to sing our theme song, Walking with Jesus. six or seven years old uh, I was on the road with my friends and we found this spot nearby on the sidewalk and it was filled with blocks so we stopped by to rest for a while 
and few minutes later a block fell on my left hand right here and it was it burst my hand and my hand was bleeding so hard um you could see my flesh my uncle rushed me to the hospital as fast as he could i had to get stitches on my hand and I was crying really hard and God answered our prayers for helping me to I'm um, feeling better and I went home rest and he helped me to forget that this ever happened on my hand and everyone should know that God um, could help them with their problems as well so all they have to do is worship him praise him pray to him for him to bless bless them and help them for their with their problems welcome to the fires of hope children's series my name is naomi murphy i attend the victoria town seventh day adventist church in manchester i am 11 years old the topic of my sermon is the great controversy but before we go let us pray Dear Heavenly Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy holy name. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for everything you have done for us, dear Heavenly Father. Thank you for keeping us from all day until now. Cleanse us from the crown of red to the soul of our feet. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. My objective tonight is to show the results of the entrance of sin to Adam and his descendants. Professor J.H. Huxley was a well-known agnostic. His nurse revealed that in the last moments of his life, as he lay dying, the great skeptic suddenly looked up as at some sight invisible to mortal eyes and staring a while whispered, so it is true, all men die. Whether you are an agnostic, an atheist, or a skeptic, you will someday come to one realization. Death is real. Death is a fact of life. It can never be erased, my friends. It can never be ignored. Millions of people die each year. The statistics show that every hour, 5,417 deaths occur. Caucasian people die, Negro people die, Asian people die, doctors die. But tonight, my brothers and sisters, the big question is, why do I have to die? The Holy Bible says that in heaven and earth had a beginning called into existence by God. In fact, everything we can see and can see comes from the hand of God. The sky, the sea, the planets, the sun, the moon, the stars, everything. Man was created different from everything created by God. Genesis 2 verse 7. And the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life. And man became a living being. Man was honored by being the last of all creatures. Everything was completely fitted and furnished for his reception. Before man was created, there was sin in the universe. Sin began in heaven. Sin is a misery. Sin started in the heart of Lucifer. Isaiah 14 verse 12 and 13 says, How are you fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How are you cut down to the ground, you who weakened all nations? For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will be like the most high. Because of Lucifer's choice to be selfish and disobedient, God had to cast him out of heaven. Revelation 12 verse 7 to 9 says, And war broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought. 
but they did not prevail or was a place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old, the called the devil and Satan, who deceived the whole world. He was cast to earth and his angels was cast out with him. Satan now occupies the earth, and men and women are now inhabitants of this same earth. Will Satan deceive man? Will man respond? Will God administer penalty if man changes allegiance? Genesis 3 verses 6 to 7 says, So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took off its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband, and he ate. The eyes of them were both opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together, and made themselves coverings. From this narrative, it is clear that man disobeyed God. Man must now face the consequences of making the wrong choice. Why do I have to die? A talking serpent tricked Eve. Adam, although he wasn't deceived, ate the forbidden fruit. The earth is cursed and man is condemned to die because Adam and Eve chose not to obey God. Romans 5 verses 12 says, Therefore, just as through one man sin entered the world and death through sin, and thus death spread to all men because all sin. Adam's sin affects everyone, and the penalty affects everything. Romans 8 verses 22. Adam's mistake is so devastating that even if you make the right choice, you will still die. Because of disobedience, we have sickness, crime, suffering, disease, and death. Death is devastating. Death is separation. But tonight, my brothers and sisters, I have a good news for you. God has a plan to reverse the curse. 1 Corinthians 15 verses 22, 21 and 22 says, For since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. There is hope beyond the grave. There is hope in Jesus. John 3 verse 16 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. My brothers and sisters, we can live again because Jesus died in our place. He took our pain. He took our shame. He took our punishment on Calvary. The songwriter says, Jesus paid it all, all to him I owe. Sin has left a crimson stain. He washed it white as snow. Friends, our only hope in this life is to accept Christ as our Lord and Savior. Our only hope beyond the grave is to live and die in Christ. At the funeral of a minister, a little girl was seen skipping lightheartedly through the cemetery at dusk. Someone asked, aren't you afraid of this place? Oh no, she replied. I only crossed through here to get home. God wants us to get home, my friends. Home where there is no night. Home where the sun is the light. The place I've been dreaming of so long. Loved ones there to welcome me. And his sweet face will be the first I see when my journey.
Revelation 21 verses 1 to 5 says, Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away. Also, there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, no more sorrow, no more crying. There will be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. God is not a man that he should lie. Whatever he says, he will do it. He not only said it, he told John to write it down. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. My brothers and sisters, we have hope in Jesus. Just put your trust in him and be faithful. The great controversy end in the destruction of sin and the de end of the devil and his angels. But most importantly, God will reverse the curse. There will be no more sin, no more death, no corruption, just joy and peace in Jesus. Tonight, my friends, you can be a part of God's plan. Tonight, you can move from death to life. Tonight, you can join the family of God and allow Jesus to take you home. dramatic episode in which everything is at stake. The possibility is there for us to lose our very soul. But tonight there is hope in Jesus. Wherever you are, if you're in your bedroom, if you're in your car, if you're in the living room, wherever you find yourself tonight, the message is there is hope in Jesus. If you would just confess your sins, there is a God in heaven who is willing to forgive. Won't you just ask him tonight? Just bow your head where you are and repeat this prayer with me. Heavenly Father, thank you, O oh Lord, for the forgiveness that is found in Jesus. We have sinned against you, O oh Lord. But tonight you have reminded us that there is power in the name of Jesus. Forgive me, Lord, of my sins. Forgive me of my fears and my doubt. And help me tonight to believe that there is hope in Jesus. Thank you for hearing my prayer. For I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Too, Halle. What about you guys? Oh, we learned a lot. Let me share what I learned. I learned that the controversy will end. 
with the destruction of sin. Oh yes, and I learned about Jesus, the greatest storyteller. Yes, and I learned that it is best to be on Jesus' side because he will be the winner in the end. So tune in tomorrow at 7 p.m. for another Power Packed program. Until then, resist the devil and, and keep walking with Jesus. Jesus. Bye! Bye. Sunshine, walking in the rain, walking every day, all along the way. Walking in the sunshine, walking in the rain, walking with Jesus, my Lord. Praying with Jesus, praying every day, all along the way. Praying with Jesus, praying with Jesus, my Lord. Sunshine, praying in the rain, praying every day, all along the way, praying in the sunshine, praying in the rain, praying with Jesus, my Lord.